Hey there, Socky here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to share over 50 plus tips, tricks, and fantastic tactics to customize your new and shiny S10 or S10 Plus. Now, this is a fantastic smartphone, and these in depth tips will allow you to maximize your ownership of your smartphone. So, let's dive in and discover. Now, before we dive in, if you find my videos useful, make sure to click that subscribe button and also make sure to click that bell icon on the side to get notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, make sure to follow me on all at Saki Tech Online also for the latest updates. All right, let's dive in. All right, so before we dive into the main dish, I do want to give you a quick bonus tip. So let me turn off my device. I'm going to show you something really amazing. So let me lock the screen really quickly. And when I double tap to go into the lock screen, you'll see that there's going to be a gorgeous video wallpaper on the background. And of course, then the screen shuts off. But if you tap it again, and if you press and hold, you can actually watch the full uh, video wallpaper in the background as you please. And if I let go, I can just uh, unlock the smartphone. But if I press and hold, I can actually watch the entire video clip that I have downloaded. So let me show you how to get this done for your smartphone as well. So what you want to do is you want to pinch on the screen, tap on wallpapers. And then what you want to do is you want to look for video wallpapers. Now, if I go to my wallpaper gallery over here, you'll see that at the bottom right of every wallpaper uh, that is video wallpaper, it says video. Okay, so when I go inside, I can preview that specific video wallpaper uh, as much as I want. All right, and then I can set the wallpaper as I want. So what you want to do is when you go to the theme store and go to wallpapers, you want to tap on the search icon and tap video. Just type in video, okay, and then click search. And that's going to give you a list of all the available video wallpapers. Now, some of them are obviously free and the other ones you do have to pay for. But for example, let's uh, just go down here, find something really cool. So this one over here looks pretty nice to me. So I'm going to download that. Once it is downloaded, I can just click apply and then set as wallpaper. And as you can see, again, we can see the full preview right here. So let's just set as wallpaper and go back home and then lock the screen real quick. Lock the screen double tap to wake up and that's the new wallpaper and again if i press and hold i can watch the entire uh, movie clip on the background on my lock screen but if i don't do that i can just watch the quick preview or i can just go right in okay this makes your phone look absolutely stunning all right so let's get started right away the very first thing i want you guys to do is go to the settings and then scroll all the way down go into your about phone section and then click on edit right here and simply rename your Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Now in my case, I'm gonna rename it to Saki. And what this is gonna allow me to do is when I connect my phone to other Bluetooth devices, it's gonna be more easily recognizable. And also you now have a custom name on your smartphone. So there we go, that's Saki 10 Plus. Fantastic, let's move on. The next thing I wanna have you guys do is, as you can see on the top, you do have a battery icon, but you're not seeing the percentage meter that shows you exactly how much battery is left. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring this down, go into the uh, uh, option over here, tap that uh, three dot button here, and then go to status bar and quickly enable the show battery percentage meter. And now it says 61%, that's much better than the normal icon. Now, one more thing is uh, when you swipe down on the screen, it takes you to the app drawer. When you swipe up, it also takes you to the app drawer. And also when you tap on this button, it also takes you to the app drawer. So there's a lot of redundancy going on here. Let's fix that really quickly. The very first thing I wanna have you do is pinch on the screen, uh, go into the home screen settings, and then enable the quick open notification panel. Just click on that. And now when we go out, when I pull down on the screen, it actually brings down the actual notifications panel. Okay, so when you when I when I, when I swipe up, it'll go into the app drawer. But when I swipe down, it brings the notifications panel. And when I swipe it one more time, it is going to expand that and give me access to the quick toggles. And the other thing I want to have you do is I'm going to have you guys disable this button in case it is enabled. So what I can do is pinch on the screen tap on home screen settings and the top over here it says apps button so what i can do is i can disable this and when i go out now that button is gone and what i can do is now i have one extra uh, room for an extra app uh, to get dumped right over there so i can grab one of these guys over here and put it right over here 
and that's just more convenient than having redundant buttons all over the place. Now swipe up, go to the app drawer, swipe down, notifications panel, and then here we have an extra space for a new app. Now, as you know, the LED light that is usually found on the top over here that we had on the Note 9, S9, S9 Plus is now gone. So there's gonna be another way that you guys can set so you receive notifications from other people. So what I want you guys to do is go to the settings and then go into display and then go into the edge screen right over here. It's gonna be right here, edge screen, and then go to edge lighting, tap on this one, and from here, what you can do is the first thing you want to do is you want to actually enable edge lighting uh, by clicking the on button and go to show edge lighting and make sure it is set to be always. But of course, if you do want to, you can customize it as well. Uh, but once you do that, what you can do is you can choose an edge lighting style. So every single time somebody does send you a message, you'll get a light that just goes around the display just like that. So that's the effect right here. You can modify all the effects. You have the wave. You got the bubble, all right? You're gonna see this icon and also you're gonna see this edge lighting over here and you can do multi-color if you so desire. You can also do the glow effect. All of them look fantastic. You can change the colors for these effects and you can also change the transparency and also the size of the actual uh, thing. So it's gonna be very thick, wide, or it can be very narrow. It's all gonna be up to you. And you can also change the duration of that effect when you get notified. So when you're done uh, doing your customizations here, let me just kick, uh, 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 click the wave over here. That's the one that I like. You just click done. And now every time you get a notification from a message, WhatsApp or a phone call, you're gonna see that edge lighting effect on your device. You do wanna make sure that you tap on manage notifications and make sure that you enable the notification for, for all available apps or disable this and manually enable the apps that you do want to see the edge lighting effect for. All right, so that's fantastic. And one more thing with the edge lighting really quickly, uh, you can interact with the uh, notifications. So if I go in here, it gives you a quick tutorial on how to interact with that little pop-up that's gonna show up on the top over here. So if you tap the pop-up, it expands it. But if you swipe on the pop-up, it opens a pop-up window. And of course, if you swipe left or right, it is going to dismiss that notification, all right? So that's fantastic. Just keep an eye on these settings over here. And let me give you a quick demonstration. So I'm gonna send myself a message. So let's just say hi to myself. And as you can see, you see an edge lighting and also a little pop-up. You can tap on this. It's gonna expand that pop-up and go right into the app. Or what I can do is I can send myself another message. I can swipe down on this uh, notification and that's going to activate the pop-up window right here. And finally, if I send myself one more message, uh, when that thing pops up, I can just dismiss it by swiping it to the side, all right? Now, one thing I'm gonna show you guys is, uh, I'm gonna show you this in a second, but I do have a little panel here on my edge screen that allows me to lock the screen. I'm gonna show you how to get this done, but let me lock the screen really quickly. Uh, what I wanna show you guys is when the screen is turned off, you can tap it once to show the always on display that I wanna be talking about in a second, or you can tap it twice and that's gonna take you to the lock screen. Now in the lock screen, what you can have is you can have face widgets. So let me double tap here. And as you can see, I have the music controller here. If I was actually playing music, uh, I have the calendar uh, widget over here. I can also have the alarms and I can also have the weather over here. And again, these are things you do have to enable. So let's go inside. I'm gonna show you where they are. Let's go to the settings. Let's go to the lock screen. And then from here, go to face widgets, tap on it and make sure that the ones that you do want are enabled. So they're gonna show up on the top of your lock screen. Now, let me go to the uh, always on display, which is right here. Make sure that this is enabled. Uh, basically, if I go in here, it is fully customizable. Uh, this one is enabled. Let me just X that out. And then the display mode should be set to tap to show. Do not do show always. That is going to eat your battery life a lot. You can also do show as scheduled, maybe at nighttime, but tap to show is the best option. With this option, again, if I lock the screen, I just have to tap the screen and it's gonna show me the always on display uh, for 30 seconds, okay? So that's not gonna eat battery life and you still get the benefits of having an always on display. And of course you have the option to show music information. So if I do enable this and if there was any kind of music playing in the background, it would show up, it would automatically recognize what song is playing and give you information on exactly what that song is. 
including the artist name and the song name. Anyway, let's move on here uh, to the always on displays clock style. So if I go over here, tap on clock style, I can choose the always on display and actually modify the way that clock looks. So you can pick all these beautiful options. There's so many of them, all right? You can have this clock, that clock, this clock if you want. Let's pick this one, then tap on color, and now you can also change the color of the clock that you desire. So if I click done, if I lock my phone one more time, uh, if I tap, you're gonna see that we're gonna have the new clock option on the top. So double tap to go to lock screen, fingerprint, boom, we're right in. And of course, while we are here, if you do tap on the clock style, you can also change the lock screen's actual clock style. That was for the always on display. If you tap on this one, you can also pick different options for your lock screen, uh, such as this guy over here, this one over here, this one, this one, whatever you want. All options are right here. And then if I go to the color, I can pick any color that I want from this color wheel, click done, and that's the red color. Click done one more time. If I lock it, boom, you've got that beautiful uh, clock on the top right over here. And still, you have access to the face widgets that we just talked about. All right? Fantastic. Now, one more customization that I really personally enjoy is if we go in over here uh, to settings, go back to the lock screen, and go over to the contact information, I like to put a little signature on my lock screen display. So if I tap on this one, I can just say Saki Tech. You can also put a quote here if you want, your name or whatever you want. Okay, so I click done, and if I lock the screen, boom, at the lock screen, it's gonna say Saki Tech right under the date and time over here. So again, that's a nice personal touch. Now you must have noticed that every single time I lock the screen, and if I go back into the lock screen, I have a different wallpaper. To achieve this effect, just pinch the screen, go to wallpapers, and then go into view all for your wallpapers and make sure you pick the multi-pack option. It says it at the bottom here. So when you pick the multi-pack option, you have the ability, uh, the phone has the ability to just pick a random wallpaper from a list of wallpapers that you have uh, downloaded, all right? So that's a multi-pack option. Uh, you have several options here, as you can see, all right? They're all gorgeous, just an FYI. Now, one more thing I'm gonna be talking about is the navigation uh, buttons at the bottom. You got the back button, the home button, the recents button. Now, this is fully customizable as well. So if I go to the settings over here, and if I go into display, all I wanna do is swipe down to where it says navigation bar, tap on it, and then what you can do is you can actually uh, hide these buttons, and then you have three lines over here that perform the same function. You go home, all right? You bring up the recent apps, or if you're in a menu, you go back, just like by swiping up. So that's back, home, recents, button. Now if I go back to navigation bar, if you want a true full screen experience, you can disable the gesture hints, and those three lines at the bottom disappear as well. Now you just have to remember what's what. As you can see, I can pull up the recents, I can go back, and all that good stuff. Let's go back to navigation bar here, and let me just enable the gesture hints. I like to have them, but really I just like to have the actual buttons for some reason. And of course you can reorder the buttons here as well. I can have the back over here, recents over here, but this is the way I like it, all right? Now let's move on to the next customization tactic. Now one thing I do wanna show you guys really quickly on the home screen is this amazing thing you can do with the app. So if you want to create a folder for a bunch of apps, all you have to do, you don't have to create a folder and put apps in it one by one. For example, let me, let's me let say I wanna group all these uh, icons here, these apps, into one main folder. All I have, do, I have to do is press and hold on one of these guys, then say select items, then select the items I wanna group together, and then just say create folder, and boom, you've got a folder, and I can actually give it a name, main, and then I can give it a color just to color code that folder. For example, if it was a finance folder, I could just have my finance apps in a green folder just like that. So that's a fantastic way for efficiency and customization and quickness. Of course, if I wanna undo that folder, I just tap on this guy right here. I select it again, I just select items, select all the items I wanna take out, grab it, they get grouped together, and I just move it and dump it right over here, and we're back in business, okay? So customization is real cool and easy and fast. Which also brings me to one more thing. Uh, make sure that you understand you can click on any one of these icons to bring up extra information. So just click and hold 
It's going to give you options and also it's going to give you notifications if you do have any messages. So if you pinch the screen, tap on home screen settings, go to app icon badges. What you can do at the bottom here is you can enable show notifications. So when you do tap on these uh, icons here, if you do have a missed call, it's going to show up somewhere right over here on the, on the YouTube application. As you can see, I have a notification. There's a small dot. If I press and hold, it's going to show up what I am, uh, what the notification is right here. Okay. Now, when we go back here and go to app icon badges, you can change that to show with number or show without number. I like it like this is nice and clean with the number. If you had five messages, it would just say five. If you had 10 missed calls, it would just say 10. But with this way, it just gives you a dot showing that there's something going on over there. Now, one amazing thing about the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the One UI is the fact that you can enable the dark mode. So if I go to display one more time, and if I go into the night mode, that's the night mode. Now, a lot of people don't know that night mode itself is also customizable. So if I pull down the notifications panel, you'll see that the active toggles are under blue color. And then you have these accent fonts over here at the bottom of the main uh, option. They're also blue. All these things are changeable. So what I'm going to show you guys is how to do that. So go home, pinch the screen, go into the themes, and then just pick another theme from here. So we have a bunch of pre-installed options. We have white, green, yellow, pink, blue. Let's do the uh, yellow one really quick. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So if I click apply on this theme, the night mode itself is going to change, which is fantastic. So let me show you what that is. Now, when I go back into the night mode and I pull down the notifications panel, that color is now different. Okay. And if I go to the settings, you'll see if I go to display, the uh, accent colors at the bottom of the main setting is also changed to a brownish color. Now, this is a great way to customize your smartphone. And of course, if you disable the night mode, you also get access to the, these other themes that just changes the way your phone looks. As you can see, if I go to the settings, uh, we've got all these different things. That's great. Every single thing in the phone changes. So the calculator here is going to look different. But let me show you just one more quick thing. Let me enable the night mode over here. You can enable the night mode from here as well. It's right here. Boom, night mode. Uh, you'll see that the calculator looks different in this night mode. But if I go back over here uh, to the themes, let's just do, do it the regular way. Go to pinch, go to themes, uh, pull down, go to default, click apply. And then when I look at that calculator in the different theme, even the calculator is going to look a little bit different. So that's what it was. Now that's what it is. Now I got the green uh, accent colors. Okay. So that's fantastic. Let's just turn this off really quickly right over here. All right. Let's, let me kill that and let's move on to the next tactic. Now, one more thing is, uh, as you know, the Samsung One UI, which this phone is running on, is designed to bring everything down uh, towards you. So if you pull things down, it is within the reach of a one handed usage. If I do go to the settings, if I go to display, for example, I can pull this down. It comes down towards me. If I go to the messages, everything is positioned at the bottom. I can start a new message by, by tapping there and all that good stuff. But there's also a true one handed mode that you do want to use. Uh, for that one, you go to the settings, you go into the advanced features right over here, and then you go to motion and gestures and you enable the one handed mode. That is this one. When you go inside, you'll notice that you can activate this mode two ways. I like the button mode. So you tap the home button three times and now you get a true one handed mode. You can also justify this to the left uh, or right based on which hand you're holding your phone with. And now the entire phone is fully usable with one thumb without having to worry at all uh, of using your second hand. I can do anything I want on this phone. When I'm done with this one handed mode, I tap here and it just goes back in business. All right. So let me go back here for a second. That is the true one handed mode. Make sure that it stays enabled and it's available at the tap of three home buttons. One, two, three, boom. All right. When you're done, click it, you're back in business. Let's disable it for now and move on to the next tactic. Now, two things that are related to media, which is video playback and sound play playback is something you should enable right away. The first thing is the video enhancer. So go to settings. And while we are here, I do want to show you, you can search for any setting that you cannot find. So I'm not going to go directly to the video enhancer. I'm just going to tap on search here. I'm going to type in video enhancer. And as you can see, it comes up and it's under advanced features. I can go right into it. 
But if you did want to go into the advanced features directly, it is right here. That's the advanced features. And if you go down, that's the video enhancer. Go inside and make sure that it is enabled. So it is going to enhance video when you play back on all apps that you download that are relevant to video playing apps. So that's for video for maximum video quality. Other thing you want to do is you want to go to sound and vibration over here. Scroll down, go to advanced sound settings, and then go to sound quality and effects. And make sure Dolby Atmos is enabled and pick it at auto. So it can uh, automatically kick in when you're watching a movie, music, voice, or if you enable this also for gaming, uh, Dolby Atmos is going to give you a surround sound-like experience that is going to be better than if it was disabled and go back right outside. And one more thing is uh, if you do go into your phone application, this is something that I like to do personally. Uh, I go to the settings over here. I tap on answering and ending calls. And from here, I make sure that I can actually take a call by pressing the volume button here or I can end a call by pressing the power button here. So instead of just swiping on the screen, you have access to physical buttons to accept calls or end calls. Alrighty. And I did promise you guys that I'm going to show you how to get this um, soft key edge feature over here. By the way, you can tap on this button to quickly access your edge panels or you can just swipe through them as I'm doing right now. So to get the soft key edge, which also allows you to take a screen capture just like that. Uh, and also, let me just click allow. And also to lock the screen without pressing the power button, you go to the settings, you go and tap this button on the top and you go to Galaxy Store. And from here, you simply search for the soft key edge. So soft key edge, okay? And it's gonna be right there. You download that. Once you download the thing, it's gonna actually show up settings right here. And then you just enable it like this, all right? And then you have access to these things over here the recent key right here, and also you have access to home, back, screen capture, uh, also lock. But uh, that's just great. Now one more thing, if you tap on recents, you have all these uh, app icons over here. You can always tap on the top here to start multitasking split screen just like that, as you can see. Or again, let me just get rid of that, go back home, tap on this. I can also tap on these things and open the pop-up window. So let me do that with something like the calculator app. So I can tap on here, tap over here, tap on this, and it's going to actually give me a pop-up window that I can also minimize and put anywhere on the screen that I want. I can do something else over here, and then I can tap this, do a quick calculation, put it down there anywhere I want, and we're good to go. All right? Fantastic. Now, one quick tip with the settings of the fingerprint. So if I go into settings, if I go into biometrics and security, and if I go into fingerprints, uh, I'm going to put my password in right here. And then as you can see, I have three fingerprints registered, and I've renamed two of them. To rename fingerprints, you just tap on it, and you name the uh, whatever finger that you scanned in. Now, if you don't know what finger that is, you can tap on check added fingerprints. You can put your finger there, and it'll tell you that this is the left index. And then I have my left thumb over here. And the only one that was left over was the fingerprint one, which was my right, right index right there. All right. So that's that. And make sure that you guys uh, allow this option, show icon when screen is off. So if you disable this and the screen is off, you're not going to see the fingerprint icon. But if you have it enabled, let's lock the screen really quickly. If I tap it once, it shows you where the fingerprint sensor is. If I tap it twice and go to the lock screen, again, it shows you where that is. If I did not have this enabled, this option here, tap on this one here, go back, uh, lock the screen real quick, tap over here one time, it's not going to show it. So that's just a few things you need to know about the fingerprint sensor. And that brings us to the end of this video of these amazing tips to customize your smartphone. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, just drop them down below. Or if you want to share a tip or a trick that is not in this video, just drop it down below so others can benefit as well. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button. And also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.